Welcome to Oregon Cash Flow Pro. My name is James Barber. As always, I'm here to help you maximize your cash flow. I appreciate you guys joining me. I don't say this near enough, but it's really the support that I get from this channel and seeing all the people subscribing and liking the videos and interacting with me that tells me that I'm giving you the value that makes it worthwhile to put all this content together. So thank you. Thank you so much. Today, we're just going to go through and look at the comments that people have left recently. And um, I've answered, I try to answer all the questions in there, but sometimes I, I hold off and I say, you know what, I'm going to do a video on that one. <laughs> but we're going to go through, we're going to look at each of these comments uh, made in the recent past here. And uh, we'll see how this gets received and maybe we'll keep going back, keep looking at it, uh, try and make this a regular, regular feature. We're just going to start going through these things. Lonnie asked, can I get an illustration where it changes to option A at a certain age? And uh, you can see my response here. Yes, you can. You can choose any age to make that change in an illustration. An illustration is a projection of what's possible. This is one possible scenario that can happen. And we can choose what inputs to put on it up to certain limits. So there's there's restrictions as far as how much we can project, you know, how, how much rate we can assume is put into it, things like that. But when it comes to changes that happen later on in a policy, we get to decide where to put those changes in in these illustrations. And it's generally not something that's going to happen automatically. Most of the changes that you see in an illustration are just showing you what's possible with that product. So that's why I said you can choose any age to make that change in an illustration. Here, let's see if I can highlight that. You can choose any age to make that change in an illustration. Generally, we look to make a change from an option B to an option A whenever we decide to stop funding it or permanently reduce our funding. Because oftentimes our designs are meant to have just enough death benefit for the amount of money that we're trying to put into this. The death benefit determines our MEC limit. So if we're going to reduce the funding, if we no longer want to put money into it, that might be a time where we consider reducing the death benefit and reducing that MEC limit because we don't need that space anymore. Now, in general, that's something we look to do around retirement. It could be different with a kid's policy. With a kid's policy, you may want to fund it for 10 years and then stop. And that policy is still going to be in force for another 50, 60, 70 years. Well, you don't necessarily want to reduce that MEC limit to zero because of the opportunity at generational wealth with that IUL. That MEC space in an IUL carries over and adds up year after year after year. Because of that, if you have a death benefit, when you pass away, that death benefit is going to pass on to your kids tax-free. And then they're going to be able to take that tax-free money and put it right into their IUL and fill up that mech space that's been building that went unused. It's a great opportunity for generational wealth. And then it gets to grow tax-free and eventually it's going to pass on tax-free to their beneficiaries. And the nice thing about our life insurance cash value, we have access to that with policy loans, right? So good opportunity for generational wealth. You can choose when to make that switch. I hope you found value in today's video. If you'd like to find out more about IUL and the whole life, check out these videos right over here and we'll see you next time. Now go maximize your cash flow.